We've gone through the diagnostic capability through the scan tool. We've determined that our right rear wheel speed sensor is acting up. So now I want to check it. And I want to verify that it's the sensor and not the computer. <coughs> Snap-on has a really good thing here. It's called guided component test. So I click that. I'm going to find the vehicle again. Go to Chevrolet. Go to 2005. Find the vehicle. Find the engine. Notice it's the same information that it was under scanner. And by the way, I do not have to have the dongle hooked up to do this. I can do this without having the dongle hooked up, without talking to the ECM. So this is the correct vehicle. I'm going to hit OK. I want to go into ABS because I'm looking for a wheel speed sensor. The only test I can do on this is the wheel speed sensor. Now you notice I've got four different screens here. The first one you guys should always go to is component information. Picture this as Mr. B. I'm telling you what that sensor does, how it operates, where it's located, what the wires are, and how to back probe. So this is going to tell me what the connector looks like, how many wires are in it. In some instances, it will give you the colors of the wires. I look here, where, where's the best way to test it? Well, at the wheel speed sensor. Where is it at? It's at each wheel hub or in the backing plate. For the rear wheel sensor, it's in the backing plate. On some models, the wheel speed sensor is part of the wheel bearing and is not serviced. This is what the connector will look like. This is how it works. Supplies voltage to it as the wheels rotate. The speed sensor produces a digital square wave. So now we know what it does and where it's at. We want to test it. In this one, I can do a frequency, a signature, or an out of range. The best test that I like to do is the signature. This is what it's going to look like. Again, Snap-on is really good about it. Not only does it tell me, again, here's the connector, here's the pins, here's what they do, but that's what it should look like. And it tells me how to hook it up. To hook it up, if you look up in the upper left, it says the test leads I need are yellow and black. So on the back of the scanner here, I've got yellow and black. And I just plug it in like that. I've got my alligator clips. So when I switch over to the meter portion of it and I back probe my sensor, I can hook this up to the, to the back probe and then I hook the black one to a known good ground. All right. So before I get to that, this is what it's going to look like. Now, is this a... Let me see, does it say? Is this a digital or analog signal? It's digital. So the faster I spin the wheel, what's gonna happen? It's gonna get tighter. The frequency is gonna increase, but the voltage is not. The voltage is gonna be static. Zero to five, zero to seven, zero to three, whatever we're using. To get to the testing point, I click view meter. It brings up a meter at the bottom of the screen. If you notice, it's already got numbers on the side. It's already got a baseline to start. The nice thing about the Snap-on equipment is because I punched in the vehicle, the engine, and everything else, it already knows what type of sensor this is. I don't have to make any adjustments here. Now, we have the ability, if I don't know what type, I can adjust all of this. But the nice thing about this is this is monkey proof. As long as I punch the car, it's gonna give me the graph and everything I need. All I gotta do now is hook it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back probe it. I'm hopefully this is gonna work. There we go. All right, when you're back probing, you find the sensor that you wanna back probe, and you're gonna get your back probe tool. 
Now, Snap-on will sell you a box of T-pins that come in a little nice little box that say Snap-on for about 30 bucks. Or you can go to the Walmart sewing section and buy a box of 30 for $2.49. And then if I lose them, who cares? All a T-pin is is a steel pin. It's pointed at the end so I can run it up along the wire and it's a T so I can grab it with my, like that, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you how, and hopefully I got enough arms to do this. First thing we gotta find is our wheel speed sensor. Hold on, wheel. Yeah, it's still on, I still don't see your connection. There you go. See that blue connector up there? That's my wheel speed sensor. So what I want to do is I want to drive my pin right up alongside of the wire that says the signal. So let's look on the scan tool and let's see which one is the signal wire. That right along the wire. You want to push it along the wire until it bottoms out. Once it bottoms out, it's hitting the metal portion of the connector. Now what I have to do is I'm going to hook up my yellow and then I'm going to take my black wire and I'm going to find a good ground. And this should be okay. These can be a pain to get up in there. in there and then I've got my yellow connector on there and I've got a good ground with my black okay switch it over to the other one uh, 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 see. through the remote be the input up top left go to yep satellite two it'll go all right notice what happened to my voltage it went up from zero it went up a little bit higher, right? So now what happens, I start spinning the wheel, okay? The faster I go, look what happens, okay? It slows down like that. If I need to see the full screen because I want to get a good picture of it, I just go to full screen like that. Now I can really zoom in on it, okay? What you're going to look at on this signal, it's very, it's a very, what I call a clean signal. We've got 2.5 and it drops down to just about one. Don't worry about the fuzziness up there. What I'm looking for is any kind of glitch that doesn't make it horizontal or parallel. If this is coming down and all of a sudden it glitches out like that, or all of a sudden it spikes at the top or the bottom, that's where I have a problem. Remember I told you, I'm just looking for consistency. This at a glance looks consistent. So I know this wheel speed sensor is good. The sensor is good. Now I need to look somewhere else. Let's see how fast you can get that going. Oh, just out of curiosity. Let's see. Man, you ain't to work me, bro. How's it? Come on, let's see how fast you can get that going. Look at that. Now imagine doing about 80 at things on top of each other. All right? So that's what we're going to, you know, I, keep spinning. I, I could make you go for another 10 minutes. Right? Right now. <laughs> but that's what you're going to do with that. Now, if I look at that signal, remember, and I, and I said the signal's fine, but I still have a code for a right rear wheel speed sensor. My problem is somewhere between the sensor and the computer. 
That code is not going to tell me the exact component that failed. It's going to get me in the area. When it says right rear wheel speed sensor failure, it's telling me that there's a fault in that right rear wheel speed sensor circuit. And if you guys remember from electrical, now I know the circuit. I checked from beginning to end. It's not necessarily the sensor. Don't fall into that trap. You go to AutoZone and all that, they come out, they hook it up, and they sell you whatever part it says. That's wrong. I have repaired wheel speed sensor codes, mass airflow sensor codes, and it has nothing to do with that component. It's a wiring concern. Or it's a connector that's backed out or corroded. Or it's a wire that's pinched between the body. It has nothing to do with that, but it's in that circuit. Okay? Any questions? 